measures will be announced shortly. The evidence is overwhelming. China is committing genocide against the Uyghurs through population control, sexual violence, and mass detentions. Yet all we get from this liberal government are vague expressions of concern and empty promises of an investigation. The time for action is now. What specific steps is this prime minister taking to formally request that China allow such an investigation? And when will he finally declare these atrocities to be a genocide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We, of course, take allegations of genocide extremely seriously and are working uh, with the United States and our partners uh, to move forward on uh, concerted action. Uh, we recognize, as I have recognized directly uh, to the uh, leaders of China, uh, the uh, concerns around human rights violations uh, in uh, Xinjiang, uh, and we will continue to work with the global community uh, for transparency, for accountability, uh, and uh, for clarity. Uh, in terms of what is happening in Xinjiang. Honorable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, yesterday in response to a question about the Uyghur genocide, the Foreign Affairs Minister said the government is calling upon China to do two things. First, allow unfettered access to the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. And second, allow an independent and partial committee of experts to enter China. Has the government formally made these two requests of the Chinese government, either through the Chinese ambassador to Canada or through Ambassador Barton? Prime Minister. Uh, we take the situation uh, faced by the Uyghurs in Xinjiang extremely seriously, which is why we've been bringing up this issue for years uh, at all levels of uh, Chinese government. Uh, we're working with our allies on uh, assur assuring access uh, for the UN Special Representative uh, and uh, more transparency into what is going on there. Uh, we need to hold China to account uh, as a community of nations, and that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, in Holocaust Memorial Day, we're asking the Prime Minister direct questions about a contemporary genocide, and he's refusing to answer simple direct questions. Erwin Kotler, the government's own special envoy for Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism, agrees that Canada must recognize and respond to this genocide. Independent investigations have already been conducted. They've drawn on survivor testimony, satellite imagery, and leaked Chinese government data. The evidence is clear. The investigations have been done. The victims have testified. The government should believe them. Why is the prime minister still sitting on the fence and refusing to answer questions and recognize this genocide? The right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, we have been uh, highlighting our deep concerns about the situation in Xinjiang for many years to the Chinese uh, government. We have also uh, worked very, very closely with our international partners on holding them to account. Uh, we take allegations of genocide extraordinarily seriously. And that's why we are uh, in going through uh, the right processes uh, in terms of establishing uh, our, uh, our, our uh, perspective and our official position on that. Uh, uh, I understand uh, the uh, desire uh, to move quickly on that, but it's also extremely important that we move rigorously on it. The Honourable Member for Markham-Stouffville. Mr. Speaker, we have a range of tools in our fight against